Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's Spur video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next for the next week, ten days for today's Spur video, uh, which will take us to the twenty seventh of March, and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles. Ready around a couple of weeks, have a look at CFSB two at the end of video for the next four weeks. We'll begin with all of the latest developments with the uh, sudden stratospheric warming that is already starting going to intensify quite dramatically towards the end of the week so we're about that in a moment but before i do anything else i'm going to say a big thank you to our latest donors i've had a donation uh through paypal uh for gals of this now this donor would like to stay anonymous which is absolutely fine it's no problem if you want to make a donation but you'd rather stay anonymous that's perfectly okay so i'm going to say a big thank you to anonymous uh, for this uh, donation, you know who you are, I know who you are, you can be watching this video, so um, big, big thank you to you for your donation, uh, Anonymous, uh, it's so kind of you uh, to do that for Gals of this. Now, if you would like to uh, give a donation to Gals all you need to do is come to the uh, Gals of this PayPal page, and then you sign into your PayPal account, and then give whatever donation you would like to Gals of this. Uh, we'll give a shout out in videos if you want one. If you want to stand on us, that's okay too. Um, we'll still thank you as we have just done. So, uh, but we'll say thank this anonymous person. But otherwise, we'll give you a mention, and we'll say thank you, thank you so much for doing that. You might want to mention for your business, for your website. You might want to mention somebody else. Might be your birthday wish or something. So, it's however you want to mention, that's absolutely fine, and it's no problem at all. Just leave a little note when you make your donation. We'll email you back anyway to check um, what uh, what kind of mention you would like. But uh, leave a little note with your um, donation, and that's absolutely great. Thank you so much. Uh, for everybody for doing that. There's also, of course, uh, patrons. We have 63 patrons at the moment. Hello. And a big thank you to our 63 patrons. So if you would like to become a patron, because I'm just to come to the his patron page, and uh, you can sign up for a Patreon account if you haven't already got one. I mean, you can give an ongoing monthly donation. It can be anything from one dollar a month upwards to Gals of this. And again, you become a patron of Gals of this by doing that. We can you mention in videos and say, say thank you so much uh, for doing that. And whether you do it through um, PayPal or Patreon, uh, you are going to get a mention. So, thank you so much uh, to everybody uh, for their donations of becoming patrons uh, for Gals of Weathers. We're primarily as funded and will be remaining as funded. Of course, these are very difficult uh, economic times for everyone due to the um, coronavirus. And uh, ad revenues are very dramatically declining at the moment. Uh, the money that um, companies are willing to pay for ads, uh, they're sort of moving out of... Um, uh, out of uh, paying back money for the advert. So the advert is not paying as much, you see what I mean. Uh, and so therefore, other revenue streams are very, very helpful, be they uh, PayPal, Patreon. And uh, so we just say a big, big thank you to all of you uh, for your donations and also uh, to uh, Galsworthy's through um, Patreon uh, for becoming patrons of Galsworthy's. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that at this very, very difficult time. Uh, for all of us, due to the... Um, very, very nasty uh, coronavirus. Thanks so much to all of our uh, patrons and donors um, for doing that for Galsworthy's. And special thank you, of course, to Anonymous for your uh, donation. Right, so we're going to begin with the situation in terms of the stratosphere. So uh, this is the latest in terms of temperature at 10 HPA over the uh, North Pole. This is from the JMA, of course. The grey line is the trend line. So at this point of the year, um, temperature should be warming up, of course, as we move from the spring into the summer. Uh, 10 HPA being one of the top levels of the atmosphere in the stratosphere, of course. The black line shows how temperature has been performing through this season. Generally been a colder than average temperature at 10 HPA through this season, although we did get a bit warmer in the um, early part of February, but then we fell back again to a very cold level around minus 70 in the middle of February. Where we are right now, though, is that uh, this uh, black line is beginning to lift up quite quickly now. It's up to around minus 40. It's gone above average. Again, that's where um, we would tr uh, the trend would be at this point of the year, around minus 50. So around, now around 10 degrees above average. And that black line is going to increase further in the days ahead. We'll probably finish up somewhere like that by the time we get through to the weekend so a major warming of the stratosphere is uh now underway at 10 hpa in the north pole if we go 
uh, lower down to 30 hp, which is closer to the troposphere. There we are already seeing signs of uh, temperature lifting up as well. Being very, very cold uh, this season at 30 hpa. Um, the black line has been around or under minus 80 degrees through most of this season. Where we are right now, just there, around minus 70. We're still cold on an average. We're still under the grey line, but this black line will lift up further. Uh, oops, we lied when a bit uh, wonky there. The black line will lift up further, though as we go through the next few days. So temperatures at all levels of the stratosphere are going to lift up as this very, very significant warming of the stratosphere over the Arctic and North Pole uh, continues. So this is very latest from the GFS. It's metrosil.fr. You can see that already. We are starting to infiltrate these green, yellow, and orange colours into the Arctic and North Pole via the North Atlantic and Northern America. If we run through, you'll see it's going to intensify further. So it's around the 21st. Yes, very, very intense warming and stratosphere then taking place um, over the North Pole. We got the red colours very, uh, very much there. Twenty second, uh, twenty first, twenty second of March. That's a very, very significant warming of a strategy indeed. But we've got over the weekend, and that continues into the early part of next week as well. Before it eventually starts to fade away, because we can only maintain those sort of temperature levels for a few days, and then the temperature will begin to uh, lift down. But overall, we keep a relatively warm temperature in the stratosphere going then right way through to the very extended range of the um of the GFS, which gets us to the uh, 2nd of april today so a really really significant warming of the stratosphere is uh, coming up and uh, if we go back to it there we are the red colors very much there uh, that's what we're looking for back around january february time we now come towards the second or winter second half of march so we're very late on to this but uh, that is a very significant um, major sudden stratospheric warming taking place there the ecmdf also shows this this temperature forecast at 10 hpa uh for the 20th of march so yes again very significant warming stratosphere in evidence there they do highlight the north pole itself helpfully on this view it's where black x is uh, as we go through to the 26th march you can see that then the temperature beginning to drop down a little bit begin to fade out a little bit but nevertheless it has we have had a very, very significant warming of the stratosphere up to that point. Going low down to 30 HP, oh, we are also starting to see some signs, quite significant warming there. So you see the uh, temperature forecast for 192 hours at 30 HPA. And uh, quite intense warming beginning to move to that sort of level closer to the troposphere then. Uh, temperature beginning to move up to minus 20 or so. Although the North Pole itself still looks a little bit cold. Does look like we're going to maintain that all that long though. Already by the time we get through to 240 hours away, March 27th, it does look as though that um, warming is beginning to fade out. So it's going to be a very stiff at warming of a strategy at 10 HPA. How much impact this has lower down at 30 HPA and then down into the troposphere itself remains to be seen. It doesn't look like we maintain that temperature all that long at uh, 30 HPA. The uh, zonal winds are uh, lowering as well. And we can see that at 1 HPA, which is like right at the very top of the uh, stratosphere we are getting a reversal of zonal winds there you see how this black line just here dips down to uh zero just there so uh, yes a reversal of zonal winds at one hpa going uh lower down to 10 and 30 hpa we can see that we don't get a reversal of zonal winds we do see quite a significant reduction of the zonal wind at uh, 10 hpa that's where we are right now that's where we're going to be in a few days time so quite a significant reduction of zonal wind at 10 HPA, uh, and a little bit of a reduction at 30 HPA too, but not a reversal, not a reversal of zonal winds, uh, which if we did get a reversal of zonal winds, we would see those um, black lines go down uh, to there. We're, we're a little bit short of that. So, uh, yes, very, very significant warming of the stratosphere. This is a major southern stratospheric warming that will be occurring in the next few days. Probably a little bit short of a reversal of zonal winds, though, at uh, 10 HPA, and quite some way short of a reversal of zone winds 
30 HPA. The warming is going to propagate down to 30 HPA from 10 HPA, but may not last all that long. And so there are question marks about how much impact this is going to have on the troposphere. Will this actually be a killing blow for the uh, polar vortex, or will it just weaken it very, very substantially? But we will then have to wait. Uh, you know, have to wait for the, the polar vortex to finally fade away through April. We shall see, and all be revealed in uh, the next few weeks. These are the charts from uh, weatheriscool.com. So again, this is depicting the strength of zona wings. Uh, lots and lots of different coloured uh, lines on this chart. The blue line shows where the temperature has been through, um, where the zona wind has been through this season. You see how bad a very, very strong zona wind at times, of, quite often actually, record-breakingly strong zona wind. Where we are right now is somewhere around there. So zona winds are reducing. The GFS ensembles are reducing them further. Uh, and it does look as though, this is March just here, this is April just here. We've got our, so it looks like for, for the next couple of weeks where we've got these green lines, we don't get a reversal of zona winds. So in line with what the ECM is showing, that we're not going to get a reversal of zona winds in the next couple of weeks as a direct result of this sun's rest rate warning. Takes a little bit longer. Uh, the three pink and one blue line, they do eventually send the zona winds into reverse in April. Uh, and uh, it takes until the middle of April for most of those CFS V2 members to um, send the zona winds into reverse uh, into, uh, into April. So it's going to take a little while. This is going to be a very, very significant hit on the polar vortex. It is going to weaken the polar vortex a lot. It may not kill it off immediately, and it may take a little bit longer, actually, set the zone winds into reverse and see an end of this um, polar vortex of doom that has been <laughs> blasting away. It's acted as the engine that's driven all of the zonality that we've had through this winter. That polar vortex of doom has been ongoing since the autumn. It's been such a powerful uh, polar vortex, and it is going to take a little time to see the back of it, but it does look as though through April we will send the zona winds into reverse. And although this sun stratified warming is going to immediately kill off the polar vortex, it will um, it will weaken it very very substantially. And a uh, reversal of zona winds is coming probably as we get through into April. So more about that, of course, in uh, the days ahead. Uh, these are GFS upgrade temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. Uh, from our West Central for London today. Red line, 30 year other air temperature average for London. You can see that we're starting off mild average at the moment. We're going to get a cold snap though as we go through to the end of week and weekend. Maybe not quite as pronounced so as it looked a couple of days ago. You remember, a couple of days ago, these ensemble members were dipping down to that sort of level, doing something a little bit uh, like that. Maybe even a little bit more dramatic than that. They are possibly doing something. Uh, a little bit like that, most of those ensemble members. Now they're pulling back from that. And although we do get a little bit of a cold snap at the weekend, in terms of the upper air temperatures, um, they have backed away from that. However, I think we will still pull in a lot of surface level cold. More about that in a moment. And then we go through into next week, and then on into the last week of March. And uh, then we have a lot of scatter. Most of these ensemble members are quite close to average. But there is a lot of up and down going on. One thing we can say is that it's drying out. So uh, a lot of dry weather coming up in uh, the next um, day or so. There is some precipitation spikes just here. That's on the cold front that's inducing that cold snap. Uh, we just sort of get clear that cold front away from the south, so that's why the GFS ensembles are backed off from the lower upper air temperatures a little bit, because that cold front is struggling to clear from the south at the end of the week. It does get out of the way though eventually, and after that we're relatively dry, there are precipitation spikes here and there, but overall on the drier side right way through to the end of March. Temperature anomalies on the 17th to 25th of March, a little bit colder than average. It's going to be a rather cold week coming up. Didn't see much sign of that with the upper air temperature, but I think we're pulling in some quite cold surface level air of the continent. And precipitation anomalies from the 17th to 25th of March, dry than average really through most parts of the country. That's how the GFS 6 o'clock run looks for Friday. So on Friday, we've got high pressure out to our west, and we're pulling in a rather chilly north to northeasterly wind uh into weekend so high pressure then moves over towards scandinavia we turn wind into the east uh and those easy winds continue into so it's going to be a cold feeling weekend 
and then they bring to showers in the east. But the upper air temperatures are going to be desperately cold, as we've already uh, established. However, surface-wise, it will be quite cold. So there's the upper air temperatures at 6 o'clock in the morning on Monday, and they don't look particularly uh, cold, do they? But if you look at the um, if you look at the dew points, you can see that actually most of Europe looking very, very cold on the surface, and with wind coming in from the east southeast, we are dragging that cold surface level air into the UK. So frost could be quite significant actually over the weekend, and particularly through to the early part of next week as we drag in the wind from off the uh, continent, dragging the air from off the continent. We're still with those east south easterlies on Tuesday. Again, the upper air temperatures don't look particularly cold, but the dew points are giving the game away. They're much, much colder down on the surface. Some very harsh overnight uh, frost and some really severe frost actually possible through many parts of continental Europe. We could be talking about temperatures going down to minus double digits, I would have thought, through some parts of the continental Europe during the weekend, the early part of next week. That's Wednesday next week. Again, we've got the wind in from the east or the southeast. And as we go through the second half of next week, we start to put in more of a general east. The heights beginning to rise. This means that we lose a lot of the surface level cold, but we probably lower the upper air temperatures. It's a complicated pattern, but there is a little bit of wintry potential in with that, I think, for the second half of next week. That's day 10, by the way, to 27th of March. There is a little bit of wintry potential in uh, with those easterly winds then. In the more extended range, uh, moving up towards the beginning of April, that's how we look. So, overall, high pressure is away to our east northeast. Low pressure is out to west. We're probably starting to drag up some milder air from the south through the, uh, through the end of March into the early part of April. Uh, the GM looks like that. So, again, rather cold with those north northeast leers at the end of the week. Into the weekend, high pressure is sitting over Scandinavia. We're bringing in the wind from an east to south east direction. I read temperatures won't be all that cold, but it could be quite cold down on the surface. <coughs> Excuse me. Into the only part of next week, then high pressure begins to build in from off the Atlantic and starts to move into northern and eastern parts of Europe as well. We start to drag up milder air, though, from off the Atlantic. And as we get to day 10, which is the 27th of March. That's how we look. High pressure then is out to our west. And uh, we're pulling in the wings from sort of a north to northeast to the direction. That's a different solution to what the GFS is showing uh, today. It has a high pressure more centred out to our west. And then the east of north looks like that. So again, the high pressure is out to the north and west on Friday. Winds are coming in from a north to northeast direction. It'll be quite a cold end to week. Into the weekend, quite cold as well. High pressure over Scandinavia. We're dragging in uh, an east south east. The upper air temperatures won't be that cold down on the surface, though. Uh, it could be quite cold. Into the early part of next week, again, high pressure is in control. A um, little bit milder, though, again, with the position of the high pressure early next week. It's more centred across uh, Germany and Poland, which means that around the edge of it, we're actually got, we've actually got quite an Atlantic influence. So that's a bit milder through the early part of next week compared to what the uh, GFS was showing. And then high pressure sort of centres centers over top of the country as we get up towards day 10. This is Friday, 27th of March. Again, we're under that area of high pressure. So the main storyline continues to be, as it has been over the past few uh, updates, over the past few videos, the main storyline is about the drier weather that we're going to have through the second half of March. It's going to be significantly drier than anything we've had for a very long time. Uh, temperatures are going to be variable, I think. Starting off quite cold over the weekend into the beginning of next week, then probably getting milder as next week progresses. Uh, these are options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, which gets us to the 27th of March. We have 21 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure over Scandinavia and sitting to our north as well. Low pressure is to the south. Winds are going to be coming in from the east uh, with that. So um, most of the southern conditions will be in the south. Dry conditions will be in the north. And all areas will be quite cold, I think, with those east winds. 17 members of the ECM ensembles just have high pressure sitting more or less over the top of the country. This includes the control and the operational run. Operational runs run we've just been talking about, of course. Jet stream pushing off. That's starting to turn things milder by day 10 and 13 with high pressure sort of to our east, southeast, and also to the west. Maybe a little bit more influence from a jet stream doing something like that there. But overall, again, the emphasis is on dry weather 
for uh, day 10. In two weeks time, these are the options that we've got. This one is going to get us to the 1st of March, um, 1st of April, I should say. Uh, first day of next month. We have 15 members of the uh, Insane Ensembles with high pressure over Scandinavia to our north. Low pressure is over into the south of the country. So that's going to be potentially quite unsettled, actually. Maybe quite wet. And um, probably a little bit on the cool side as well. 14 members of the Insane Ensembles with high pressure just out to our west. Low pressure to the south, winds are doing something like that, coming in from a north, easterly direction there. Uh, relatively dry, particularly for the north, and potentially quite cold. 12 with a ridge sitting right over the top of the country, and then 10 looking really unsettled as a uh, low pressure and jet stream lines up northwest to southeast. And um, that looks very unsettled with those 10. Whoops, let's get rid of that. That looks very unsettled with those 10 uh, just there. Finally, the CFSV2. So these are 500 millibar heights breaking down in two week periods. The first week period takes from the 17th of March to the 23rd. And the uh, coming week has low pressure out to the northwest, high pressure sitting over to the east of the country. Jet stream being pushed northwards. So, yes, he's settling down. We've got more influence from high pressure. And it's going to be a lot drier than we've had for a very long time. Uh, week 2 is the 20, uh, 24th to the 30th of March. And we have the Scandinavian high dominating, man. High pressures over Scandinavia. Winds are in from the east. Mainly dry, but potentially uh, rather cold. And then week 3 is going to be the 31st of March, 6th of April. High pressure is more or less over the top of the country. Low pressures to the north. That looks mainly dry for the start of April. Over ridges weakening a little bit compared to week two. And then week four is the 7th to the 13th of April with low pressure out to the northwest. High pressure to our south southwest. We're reverting mild. I mean, it's going to be very spring-like, uh, but could be rather more unsettled, especially in the north and west as the wind begins to come back in off the Atlantic. And the low pressures probably start to return. Uh, right, so it's all still basically the same story that we talked about in videos over the past few days. The stratospheric warming has started, it's going to intensify, and we'll be reaching sudden stratospheric warming levels at 10 HPA by the end of week and into weekend. We are going to get quite a significant warming of the stratosphere at 30 HPA as well, although probably not lasting all that long. No reversal of zonal winds, and although the polar vortex itself will be um, really give it a hammer blow, probably won't be killed off by this sudden stratospheric warming initially, and we may have to wait into April for the final end of the polar vortex. Uh, we shall have to see about that. Um, Weather-wise, uh, the emphasis is on dry weather through the second half of, eight of March. There's going to be a lot of dry weather through the second half of March. Temperatures a bit variable, probably quite cold over weekend, so next week, and then I would have thought getting milder later on. And into April, we could well be looking at a return to more unsettled conditions, at least initially. Right, that's it for your videos uh, for today. The first video up was the verification of the winter 2019-2020 forecast. So have a look at that, see how the forecast went. Hint, it didn't go very well. Um, and we also released the ECNF 30 day look ahead uh, also as the second video up today. Tomorrow we've got five day forecast. We'll have another week's ending video update for you as well tomorrow. So come back for that then. That's all for now though, and thanks for watching.